Hi, my name is Paul Baumgarten and I am the creator of Coding Quest, the new online platform of programming competitions and challenges for secondary school students who are studying computer science. Above all else, Coding Quest is intended to be a tool through which students can learn and grow and challenge their and stretch themselves in their computer science skills and their uh, algorithmic thinking skills and so forth. So I thought it might be helpful if I do a series of videos in which I work through and solve the practice problems uh, and walk through my thinking process as I go through them. Now it's been over a month since I've looked at any of these practice problems. So with any luck, I might make a couple of errors along the way and I can also talk through how I'll go about resolving and fixing those errors. Now I'm going to be doing these solutions using Python, but you can use any modern programming language. Uh, they are all more than capable of solving these problems. Now some of these are easier than others and to be honest, in hindsight, the practice problems are a little bit out of sequence and I'll, I would have modified and, and tweaked some of them, uh, but I'm leaving them up as they stand in their original form. and. Um, We'll work through them one by one. So without any further ado, let's take a look at the first one, snakes and ladders, and how would we go about solving it? Okay, so we have some free time on our voyage across the stars. I hope you like the theme of being set in the year 2022, 2222, by the way. Um, anyway, so we're playing the classic uh, childhood game, snakes and ladders. So we have a six by six grid happening here and the player starts in the bottom left corner so down here at this zero and if they roll a three then they're going to move forward three places one two three they land on the ten which is okay so we're, yeah, we're here now they land on the ten which represents the foot of a ladder and so we're going to jump forward ten places so we can see here one place two place three place four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We land on this negative three, which is like the head of, of a snake, I guess, in Snakes and Ladders. So we have to now go back three places. One, two, three, and we finish on this zero. So then it's the other player's turn. And uh, so they would start from that zero and they move through. And the aim of the exercise is to see which player finishes first. So we have here some example data. And in the, this example, player one will win after 13 moves. So I'm gonna solve for the example data first and then have a go at looking at the input data for the main problem, which is a 20 by 20 grid containing 500 moves for two players. Okay, and we can see there that that's what the input data looks like. So let's take a look at this. So I'm gonna copy all of this and let's go into my editor. So you can see here, I've just got an empty Python file, snakes and letters day one. I'm gonna create another new file for my input data. And I'll just paste that in and save that as day one input.txt. So the first thing I'm gonna to need to do is be able to pass this input data and extract some meaning out of it. So I've got here this six by six grid. It is six, yeah, six by six. And then there's the 20 moves down here. So I'm gonna want these as separate uh, lists or arrays. Um, more technically they're lists in Python, but you can think of them as arrays for the most part. Uh, so let's, Let's read in the whole file first of all. So with open and it's day one in, oh, input dot text. And I'm going to open that into reading mode and I'm just going to give it a file handle of F and let's just read it in as one big array of strings. So data is equal to f dot read read everything in and let split the lines oops that's not r that's f okay so now if i just print out data save that and run it 
okay we just have here one line one string which is each line of the file right now I'm going to want this as two-dimensional array um, but I also need to split out the first six lines from the other 20 lines so I might do that part first um, so I'll, let's create a an array called grid and that can just be that can have data from lines uh, from line zero up to not including line six remember we're zero indexed though and then I'll create another array called moves and that can be from line six to the end and now if I print grid Right, and I look through that. Yeah, that's just got my, my grid there of those six moves. Oh, sorry, of the, the six by six grid. And if I print moves, okay, I can see that there's all my moves there. All right, let's turn these into uh, arrays of integers now. So moves, there's the long way and then there's the, the Python shortcut way. <laughs> Let's um, show you the long way and then I'll show you the shortcut. How about that? All right. If I just take moves and I'm going to for line in data from six to the end. All right. So let's just show you what this is going to give me. This is oh, if my mouse works properly. All right, there's all the lines in the moves. Okay, so we're reading from line six, well, which is technically line seven, but it's zero index, so it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, so line six here, uh, through to the end. But I want to actually split those up into player one and player two, but you can, so I've got this string. So really I'm gonna want line to be split on a space Right, and now I've got that, but there's still uh, strings. So really, I could do moves, pend, and I'm gonna add, um, all right, I'm gonna add a list which has the, let's call this, I don't know, bits. <laughs> Although they're not they're not bits in the computing sense. Let's call them parts. Alright. So part zero. I want this as a big array so that I can just iterate through it later on. Oops, and then I, I need a print moves. Just so you, we can see what this is ending up as. Okay, so there's there's my array with all my moves. Uh, but I still want them as integers. So each one of these, I'm just gonna wrap with the integer function to turn it from a string to an integer. Okay, and so we can see here, I've got uh, a list inside a bigger list. So I'm happy with that, but I, we can actually do all of, the, well, not the print statement, but we can do all of this in just one line. Um, so let me comment that out and show you how to do this as one line. Moves is equal to for line in data six to the end. Int Um, for line I want to split it hmm just thinking how to do this now now I've promised I can do it all in one line <laughs> um, 
Because if I do that, oh, this is going. <laughs> this is icky. <laughs> um, I mean, it'll work though. Uh, let's copy it and paste that. See, that should give me the same thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if I'm if I'm trying to iterate through this, for let's just use an i count uh, an index counter for i in range, because I actually prefer to use index based loops um, because it's more compatible with what you get in other languages as well. All right. So we we would actually be saying okay for move i player one rolls moves i and player one will be player zero and then player two rolls moves i and there player one all right so just to show you what this does um why have I got the parentheses wrapped around this? Yeah, okay. That was because of the, the run function I'm using. Anyway, so we can see here we've got the, the 20 moves and we've got the data for each of the players. Okay. Um, needed to fix up the six by six grid as well. So let me do that. That's also a two dimensional list. So for line in data zero to six. And we're splitting on spaces. So um, n for n in line dot split on spaces. And I want to turn that, those into integers. So as you can probably gathering, a large part of the solving of the problems may be initially figuring out how to pass your input. Okay, so you can see here, I now have this two dimensional list. All right, if I print it out in two dimensions, um, so for row in range zero to grid, for column in range zero, grid for that row print out row column and let's just put us and at the end of every line move on to the next one okay and we'll after all that we'll end up back at um, uh, range length end up back where oh, end up back where we started okay so yeah <laughs> um, but I know my passing has worked and I have this now as a two-dimensional array of six by six all right now in terms of actually solving this however uh, the, one of the tricks behind the snakes and ladders problem was to realize that while the data is given to us as a two-dimensional array because that's what the traditional snakes and ladders game involves and us weaving back and forth. Moving through this two dimensional array is actually really painful because we would have to keep track of which direction we're heading on. You know, are we going left? Are we going right? So when I solved this the first time, I actually realized I could take this two dimensional array and just turn it into one dimensions and flip um, the left right when I when I'm passing it into one dimensions what do I mean by that so really what I want because if I get like here when I landed on this 10 right I want to move forward 10 places 
So why can't I just have this as a one dimensional list that is in order and I just move forward those 10 places. And then if I have to move backwards, I move backwards three places and so on and move left and right through one dimension. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do before trying to play the game is I'm gonna convert this six by six two dimensional grid into a one dimensional 36 grid where the moves are, the squares are in the correct order. So let's call this, I don't know, game. I'll call it game. Um, so I'm just going to create an empty list and I'm going to start here where I need to start. All right, so let's, let's start with that row. So um, for every row, and let's start Okay, now for those of you who are not familiar with how the range function works in Python, when, when you provide three values here, it's the starting value up to but not including the middle second value, and then this is the incrementer value. So how much we want to move change it by every time we loop. All right, so if I, if I print row, I'll show you what this is doing. All right, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, and it just so happens, so this is row five, that's row four, that's row three. So this is giving me, so I'm gonna start at the bottom, which is where my gameplay needs to start. Now, when I am on an odd number, an odd row number, I want to process that row left to right. And when I'm on an even, row number, I'm going to process that row right to left. <laughs> Let's make it, get my directions correctly. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is if row mod 2 is, all right, so if I divide by 2, I have a remainder of 1, that means I'm on an odd row. Process left to right else even row process right to left all right so let's process the numbers that are in this row um, so for column in range 0 to the length of grid for this row and I'm deliberately you putting in length of the grid of the row each time instead of just saying six, so that it will automatically adjust when I then give it the big 20 by 20 inputs and I don't have to remember to go through and change my code everywhere. Uh, Game.append, let's just put the number in for this grid, at this row, at this column. And that should do that. And then this one, for column in range, from, again, so this is my starting number, right? When there's six numbers here in the uh, columns, there's six columns. So the, the length of the column will be six, but I actually need to start with column number five. So I need the sub minus one, which is why I also had the same there for my rows. So I'll do the same here, right? Length of the, of the grid, oh, come on, spell correctly. Grid of the row. Minus one, keep going up until, but not including minus one, and we'll reduce by one every time. Game dot append grid row column. Okay, now if I've done this correctly, when I print game. Okay, so what have I got? 0, 8, 0, 10, 0, 0, 0, 13, 0, minus 6. And so you can see here that we went that way, and then we've gone that way, and now we've gone that way, and now we've gone that way. All right, um, and so we finish off, we come up here, 0, 0, minus 20, 0, minus 10, 0, and there it is there, there 0, 0, minus 20, 0, minus 10, 0. So now I just have a one dimensional list, which is gonna be a lot easier to process my game. 
All right, so now let's play the game. All right, so what are we? We're about half an hour into this recording, probably. I'm not even aware. Yeah, tw well, 20 minutes into this recording, and I haven't even started the game. I've been setting up my data. And this is, I guess, an important point when it comes to problem solving with computing. A lot of the time, you're s spending time uh, figuring out the abstraction of your problem and solving that first, coming up with a model that's gonna best represent the problem and it will simplify you then actually solving it. If you, if you spend some investment time up front to figuring out the best way to model your problem. So now we can play the game, all right? And so we've got these moves. Um, so for move in moves, we know there's 20 of them. All right, so player one, their move is just gonna be, um, so this move is just gonna give me player one and then player two's move, all right? There you go. It's an, all right, so that's that. That's the first move, then that's the next move, and then that's the move, next move, and so on. Okay, so let's just do player one's move is zero, and player two's move is that one. Okay. Now, what happens with the moves? We need to... So that, yeah, so that's their current move. We need to know their current location. So player one's current location starts at, at on square zero. Player two's current location also starts on square zero. So let's, we look at the move. Let's add it, um, add it to the location. So player one location is whatever's already in it and we add the move to it. Let's do this. Um, player two's location. Let's just add the move to that. But we then need to check the square that we've landed on. And if it's not a zero, then we need to process it and either move forward or backwards until we get to a zero. So I'll do it for player one first and then we'll do it for player two. So we can just do, rather than just saying if game player one location uh, doesn't equal zero, um, I actually wanna keep looping because like in the example, I land on the 10 and then I land on the minus three. So I'm gonna, this is actually a while loop. I wanna keep doing it while it doesn't equal zero. And if it doesn't equal zero straight away, it just won't execute the loop at all. Um, so I need to look up that square and then adjust my location accordingly. So um, player one location, let's just add whatever's in that square. Now this will come up with a problem. Uh, and do the same for player two. So if the square for their location isn't a zero, then we're gonna look up what's at that, look, we're gonna look up at ugh, the number at that location and we're gonna change our location by that amount. So player two. Um, but what this doesn't account for is if we run over the end of the game, which is what, we will do eventually. So when, if I run this, we should get an error once, there we go. Okay, list index outside of range because we've read past the end of the array. So we will actually want to do a check in here um, for when the game is over effectively. Um, so if, Our current location, P1 location, plus whatever's in that, takes us past the length of the game, then player one 
player one has won or they finish the game um, we need to know the move count which oops is all right well this is another reason why i should have been using index looping so let's just let's change this for move let's just make it for for i in the range of the length of moves and then that means i need i in here that's moves plural Um, player one wins after I plus one moves and I'm adding one to it because remember move the first move is move zero because uh, it's all zero base indexing all right um, and then really I can I need to exit we can e we can end the program <laughs> it's not clean but it, it'll work all right do the set copy and paste do this turn this all into player two and let's run it let's see what this does okay we are still getting index outside of range well ah because here i'm checking So I'm checking the game location. Oh, because I'm adding it. I'm adding it before I'm doing this if check. So I need to have this if check happen before I go into the wild loop as well. Because here I might have gone outside of the range already. So I need to do it anytime I'm processing the move. So all right again it's not elegant but in terms of solving a competition <laughs> you just go for it. sometimes you go for what works and i'm still going outside if that oh because i'm still looking it up sorry i need to do that prior to adding it. Because I'm still pushing myself outside the uh, the array bounds otherwise. Oh, now what am I doing? <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> so I'm checking before I apply the move. because oh, that's checking the, where I currently am instead of applying the move to it. All right, because this is slightly different logic. This is my dice roll, and then this is what's what's at that square. So then here I'm applying the, di the dice roll to it. All right, but then here I'm not applying a dice roll, I'm applying the what's at the square to my move and so that's why i'm having to check different things i told you it'd been about a month since i looked at this i'm still going outside of range though line 40. this should be detecting it player one if player one move plus my current location takes me past the end of the game <laughs> gee whiz I'm the pressure of trying to do this in a video well I don't want to do it in debug but I'm still going outside the range stop that if my current move if my current location plus the move takes greater than or equal to 
Is that all it is? I would feel really silly if that's all it is. That is all it was. Okay. <laughs> Finally, player one wins after 13 rounds. Is that what this had? Yes, player one wins after 13 rounds. Okay. Now, if I've done this correctly, I should just be able to copy and paste this. So let's grab this and see if I can solve. Oops. Now, what am I doing? Um. using a Windows keyboard on the Mac. That's why I'm having trouble with my keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> Day one, input, real. Okay, so the only things I should have to change here is let's change this file name. And instead of line, instead of processing six lines, here, zero, six, should be 20 and 20 and everything else should be the same player one wins after 95 moves let's test that I think that's correct 95 yes there we go all right what did that take 31 minutes <laughs> okay Obviously, I could have done it a lot faster, but um, yeah, I felt it was worth kind of walking through and you watching me get myself a little frustrated as I was constantly going outside of bounds of the array. Um, and to illustrate the importance of pri uh, thinking through the data and passing it in a way that makes sense for the scenario. Right? And it's, it was a lot easier, even though I had trouble still going outside the array bounds, um, it was still a lot easier turning into that one dimensional array first. Okay, I will move on to day two in the next video. Thanks for watching. This is Mr. Baumgarten signing out. <laughs>